sayings of the Buddha. Choices. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts we make the world. Speak or act with an impure mind. And trouble will follow you as the wheel follows the ox that draws the cart. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts we make the world. Speak or act with a pure mind. And happiness will follow you as your shadow, unshakable. Look how he abused me and beat me. How he threw me down and robbed me. Live with such thoughts, and you live in hate. Look how he abused me and beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me. Abandon such thoughts, and live in love. In this world, hate never yet dispelled hate. Only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and inexhaustible. You too shall pass away. Knowing this, how can you quarrel? How easily the wind overturns a frail tree. Seek happiness in the senses, indulge in food and sleep, and you too will be uprooted. The wind cannot overturn a mountain. Temptation cannot touch the man who is awake, strong and humble, who masters himself and minds the law. If a man's thoughts are muddy, if he is reckless and full of deceit, how can he wear the yellow robe? Whoever is master of his own nature, bright, clear, and true, he may indeed wear the yellow robe. Mistaking the false for the true, and the true for the false, you overlook the heart and fill yourself with desire. See the false as false, the true as true. Look into your heart, follow your nature. An unreflecting mind is a pool of roof. Passion like the rain floods the house, but if the roof is strong, there is shelter. Whoever follows impure thoughts suffers in this world and the next. In both worlds he suffers. And how greatly, when he sees the wrong he has done. But whoever follows the law is joyful here, and joyful there. In both worlds he rejoices, and how greatly, when he sees the good he has done. For great is the harvest in this world, and greater still in the next. However many holy words you read, however many you speak, what good will they do you if you do not act upon them? Are you a shepherd who counts another man's sheep, never sharing the way? Read as few words as you like, and speak fewer, but act upon the law. Give up the old ways, passion, enmity, folly. Know the truth, and find peace. Share the way. Wakefulness. Wakefulness is the way to life. The fool sleeps as if he were already dead. But the master is awake and he lives forever. He watches. He is clear. How happy he is for he sees that wakefulness is life. How happy he is following the path of the awakened. With great perseverance he meditates, seeking freedom and happiness. So, awake, reflect, watch, work with care and attention. Live in the way, and the light will grow in you. By watching and working, the master makes for himself an island which the flood cannot overwhelm. The fool is careless, but the master guards his watching. It is his most precious treasure. He never gives in to desire. He meditates. And in the strength of his resolve, he discovers true happiness. 
he overcomes desire, and from the tower of wisdom, he looks down with dispassion upon the sorrowing crowd. From the mountaintop, he looks down on those who live close to the ground. Mindful among the mindless, awake while others dream, swift as the racehorse, he outstrips the field. By watching, Indra became king of the gods. How wonderful it is to watch, how foolish to sleep. The beggar who guards his mind and fears the waywardness of his thoughts burns through every bond with the fire of his vigilance. The beggar who guards his mind and fears his own confusion cannot fall. He has found the way to peace. Mind. As the Fletcher whittles and makes straight his arrows, so the master directs his straying thoughts. Like a fish out of water, stranded on the shore, thoughts thrash and quiver, or how can they shake off desire? They tremble, they are unsteady, they wander at their will. It is good to control them, and to master them brings happiness. But how subtle they are, how elusive. The task is to quieten them, and by ruling them, to find happiness. With single-mindedness, the master quells his thoughts. He ends their wandering. Seated in the cave of the heart, he finds freedom. How can a troubled mind understand the way? If a man is disturbed, he will never be filled with knowledge. An untroubled mind, no longer seeking to consider what is right and what is wrong, a mind beyond judgments, watches and understands. Know that the body is a fragile jar and make a castle of your mind. In every trial, let understanding fight for you to defend what you have won. For soon the body is discarded. Then what does it feel? A useless log of wood. It lies on the ground. Then what does it know? Your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own thoughts unguarded. But once mastered, no one can help you as much, not even your father or your mother. Flowers. Who shall conquer this world and the world of death with all its gods? Who shall discover the shining way of the law? You shall, even as the man who seeks flowers finds the most beautiful, the rarest. Understand that the body is merely the foam of a wave, the shadow of a shadow. Snap the flower arrows of desire, and then, unseen, escape the king of death, and travel on. Death overtakes the man who gathers flowers, when, with distracted mind and thirsty senses, he searches vainly for happiness in the pleasures of the world. Death fetches him away as a flood carries off a sleeping village. Death overcomes him when, with distracted mind and thirsty senses, he gathers flowers. He will never have his fill of the pleasures of the world. The bee gathers nectar from the flower without marring its beauty or perfume. So, let the master settle and wander. Look to your own faults, what you have done or left undone. Overlook the faults of others. Like a lovely flower, bright but scentless, are the fine but empty words of the man who does not mean what he says. Like a lovely flower, bright and fragrant, are the fine and truthful words of the man who means what he says. Like garlands woven from a heap of flowers, fashioned from your life as many good deeds.
The perfume of sandalwood, rose bay, or jasmine cannot travel against the wind. But the fragrance of virtue travels even against the wind, as far as the ends of the world. How much finer is the fragrance of virtue than of sandalwood, rose bay, of the blue lotus, or jasmine? The fragrance of sandalwood and rose bay does not travel far, but the fragrance of virtue rises to the heavens. Desire never crosses the path of virtuous and wakeful men. Their brightness sets them free. How sweetly the lotus grows in the litter of the wayside. Its pure fragrance delights the heart. Follow the awakened, and from among the blind, the light of your wisdom will shine out purely.